The Nigerian Economic Summit Group is calling on the government to carry out economic reforms and put the country on a path of sustainable development. The group is warning that Nigeria cannot afford the business-as-usual approach, saying it will lead to further job losses and leave millions in poverty. The group's economic outlook for this year predicts the economy will grow by 2.9% in the best-case scenario. If no action is taking, it's feared there could be negative growth. Well, for more on this, we're joined by Laoyi Jayola, the CEO of the Nigerian Economic Summit Group. Thank you so much uh, for joining us on Newsnight. Thank Good you. Good to see you again. Thank you. Uh, well, let's begin very quickly with your call on the federal government to come up with tough and bold uh, economic policies, uh, you know, to pull Nigeria out of the current uh, economic situation it finds itself. Exactly what are those policies that you have in mind? Well, well, let me be very clear. There isn't anything that we've said in our report that is altogether very new. Because if you look at Nigeria, look at where we are, when you look at our external reserve, when you look at foreign direct investment flow, we've, been, we've plateaued around the same areas in the last eight years. And we've been saying the same thing. Look, the government of Nigeria does not have enough resources to pull us out. We didn't have it before COVID, and COVID, all COVID did was it just exacerbated the, the problems. And so there is a need for us to put our house in order to drive investment. The first thing is that, look, there are sufficient money out there that are doing negative yield that are going to other areas that are not coming to us in Nigeria. And, you know, we, we, we call the you know, Nigerians big giant. Yeah, Africans big giant. But you know, you must be giant enough to attract things. I listened to you in the afternoon. You know, about a billion dollars just went to South Africa. Ghana there is getting some people coming over there. And look, it, African Continental Free Trade Agreement means that some of those pro goods and produce will come to Nigeria. So our first call is, I look, we need private investment. And for there to be private investment, we need to make our conditions and our environment attractive. And look at these conditions, very simple. Look, no one will come to an environment that is no stability. So first thing is there must be monetary stability in Nigeria. We've been having problems with the FX, we've been having uh, foreign exchange, we're having problems with inflation, is running up and about, you know, interest rate. So, so there is volatility. And, you know, businesses can deal with risk. What they can deal with is uncertainty. So we're saying, first and foremost, let's have higher level of stability in what we do. That's the first thing. But you know, added to the stability, what we then have come is say, look, there is a need to have stability. There are certain sectors that we need to look at. And what we did was to review all the sectors of the economy. Only five of them, according to NBS report, had positive growth, right? The rest of the sectors had negative growth. Well, we can say um, COVID caused a problem. But before COVID, we have been having this thinking. Now, how do we ensure that we do what is attractive to, to, to get them in. And I give a very, very simple example. Uh, if you look at our budget, we run deficit. I mean, so we borrow money to even do recurring expenditure. Now, of course, the say government should close the door and not pay salary. So, I mean, they just have to pay salary. Either we ask those people to go or they pay salary. But in terms of a pandemic, when things are bad, they just can't ask them to just go in out. You need to care for a citizenry. Now, what you need to do first and foremost around that area, the simplest, the, the most simple thing that we are calling government to do, and you recall my chairman did make this, that look, the PIB bill should not just be a bill that we are doing to tick a number. If you do a PIB bill, that's an I mean, petrol industry, industry bill, bill, that does not drive investment into Nigeria, it's a failure. If you do it right, six, okay. seven billion dollars can come in, come in and they cover the gaps. And there's some analysis that have been done all around that shows that even smaller in the summer countries like Guyana and Co, they don't even have the kind of reserve we have attracting investment. And we have, a, we have one of the largest reserves for now. And knowing that we're moving away from fossil fuel, it's something that we, there's urgency to do it. So there okay. are sectors that... So I, I was just wondering that a lot of people who are analysts and who are economists, they're saying that our biggest problem could be lying in fiscal policy or non-existent of it mm. and some of them said yes we do have the policies but they're just not being implemented or oh, there's no convergence between fiscal and monetary policy well i do that's that's, that's the first thing we talk about stability that's to be some coordination 
between the monetary policy and the fiscal policy. And we need to have regulatory consistency and policy consistency. Sometimes, you know, I mean, again, I say this, we have regulators. I mean, it's good to have regulators. But the challenge I ask myself it is, are they enablers of business or they are doorkeepers? Mm -hmm. I mean, you sit down and you find out that, you know, I mean, I, I was talking to the people in the oil sector. And when they told me, I mean, I, I looked at the number of all the taxes they pay, apart from what they pay through your royalties, you ask yourself, Nigeria then becomes not attractive for businesses to come. And despite the fact that uh, 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 there is a lot, the cost of doing business keep because of security in our area is excessively high. You then pay taxes that you don't even have a limit of it. Now, if these taxes actually come into government's coffer, then our tax to GDP ratio will be a lot better because then we have more resources. But you see, there's a, there's a lot of loopholes around tax collection, who collect tax, and so we're losing this income. So we said we need to work on that. We need to work on that sector, policy consistency. Again, we said that human capital is not something we can mm. do with, it, it, we, we can live about. I mean, uh, the, the, the pandemic exposed us. Our investment in health sector is very, very poor. I mean, it was predicted that, I mean, we have 80 million people. The World Bank had said that last year they said we we're going to have about 8 million people, but then because of pandemic, more people went into, into poverty. This yeah. year, they're projecting about 15 million 15 people million. into poverty. Yeah. And so what are we doing about it? And I'm, that's why I'm wondering why you're so optimistic as to, you know, peg your uh, economic outlook for 2021 at 2.9%. Uh, contrary to what the IMF is saying at 1.1%, what's the basis of your optimism and what are the parameters very quickly in less than a minute i can tell you you know nigerian economy you can do growth is not synonymous with development when our prices do well we will grow and currently we are doing about 15 dollars per barrel and it's and it shows that our prices will do fairly well so we will come out and grow but is the life of the citizen be better no you need to have jobs we have jobs that uh, that allow people to feel inclusive and develop this so growth isn't once oil does very well we will grow you can charge the growth part for nigeria it works around oil sector which is why we're saying the lowest hungry fruit to get this money is around oil and that would be fine okay we'll have to look at the language uh, ceo nigeria economic summit group thank you so much for joining us tonight thank you for having me